cataractcoach.com. In a patient with a prior pars plane of atrectomy as well as PRK, let's see how we do things differently. Now, this is a young patient. The patient is younger than me, certainly under age 50. And he's had two prior vitrectomies. We make a small entrance using the diamond keratome. So a smaller than normal phaco incision, so we can use the smaller sleeve. This is a very large eye, long axial length, very large white-to-white -white measurement. The patient had about 10 or 11 diopters of myopia, which was first treated with PRK. And then many years later, the patient had a retinal detachment, which required a vitrectomy surgery. And then the patient ended up having a second vitrectomy to remove a macular membrane. So we're adjusting the lights here to get a good view. And we're going to do our capsular rexus here, and we're really going to take our time. I'm going slowly during this capsular rexus. It's very important that I achieve a good controlled capsular rexus. In a young patient, the capsule is more elastic. This patient's doing a pretty good job of looking at the light, but we do little steps at a time, and I need to make sure that I get an appropriate sized capsular rexus. Now remember, because it's a big eye and large white to white, don't use the iris as a guide. So we'll finish up our rexus here, and it looks like it's just about perfect. If you think it looks small, it's just because it's a large eye. You'll see at the end of the case, it'll be a perfect overlap on top of the optic. Hydro dissection being carried out, a little hydro delineation as well. There's that golden ring, another golden ring. And the key here is get the nucleus out of the capsule bag. This patient has two reasons to have an overly deep anterior chamber. One, because the patient's had prior vitrectomy times two. And the other reason is because of the very long axial length. Remember, axial myopia prior to the patient having PRK done. So the chopper here was just to push the nuclear pieces towards the phaco tip. We don't really have to chop the nucleus because the patient's young, it's not that dense. But also, very importantly, keeping the chopper in that protective position. Do not let the capsular bag come forwards, especially in this eye. Remember, you must protect the capsular bag at all, at all times. Let's zoom ahead here. Here's the empty capsular bag. You can see there's the outline of the rexus, which looks great. And we're going to put the eye well in the eye. In this case, we're using a single piece acrylic lens and aiming for a sharp distance vision or plano outcome. Now it's a little tight. Because it's a small incision, I can't put the injector all the way in, so we'll use this wound assist technique. Notice that the tip of the injector didn't go inside the eye, just abutted the main incision. There's the lens delivered inside the eye, and this way we can keep our incision smaller than normal. In this case, we want a tinier incision. Instead of a 2.7 or 2.8 incision, we want to be more in the 2.2 range. So rotating our lens into position, you can see there's a beautiful overlap of the optic by the capsular axis. And of course, to finish up here, we'll put the eye probe in the eye. That's a reverse pupillary block, so go and tent up the iris. Lifting up that iris will equilibrate the pressure between the anterior and posterior chamber and bring that forwards. We'll go behind the eye well now, remove the viscoelastic from behind the optic. That looks nice and clean and center up the lens. You can also tell this is the pink sleeve on the instrumentation instead of the purple. Pink's the smaller one. At the end of the case, let's seal up our incisions here. That looks great. Again, beautifully positioned lens. Great overlap of that rexus. And we're going to put some medication in. Here's some triamcinolone, preservative-free, to help control post-op inflammation. And then we'll also put in a meiotic agent there. And then finally, some preservative-free moxifloxin antibiotic. Beautiful. A little wax cell sponge soaked in tetracaine to help seal the incision and also anesthetize the eye. And we're going to do a small limbal relaxing incision here at about this degree mark. So there's the diamond again. And we'll go and make about a one clock hour treatment. That looks great. And then finally check everything and we'll be done. This patient is doing beautifully. And of course, there are very important teaching lessons in this case.